first time I had Green Flash beer, I think around 2006, uh, to be honest with you, it was like 2000, right around that time, and I was at Rosie O'Grady's, and somebody was pimping the beers, they were really, and, and uh, I remember the owner going, hey, you like craft beer, right? Or, or, you know, good beer is what we call it. We call it, didn't call it craft, that's a whole. We called it micro. We called it micro brew, exactly. I think you had like brown ale and uh, barley wine, and it was just like a pretty like limited amount, and I was like, I had the brown, and I was like, oh, this is pretty good. And I was like, put that in my cap, because I was right in the middle of the construction. I was like, ah, oh, I gotta check these guys out. And I remember telling all the distributors, you know, a, a lot of them, I was like, look, you know, this place is gonna open, and it's gonna really change things. And I said, you know, and they're like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And I'm like, uh, we're gonna make it loud, you know? And I was going to O'Brien's all the time, and, and uh, Liars Club, you know, uh, formerly in Mission Beach. And it was like, those were big inspirations to me. And I was like, well, you know, you gotta do something you know, that's special, which is very similar to the West Coast IPA. Innovate, don't imitate. It's easy to take someone else's idea and make it your own, but it's hard to take a good idea and to see the beauty in it and then flip it around and do something special with it. Yeah, and I think that really says something about the fact that the scene has changed so much. I mean, we've seen so many new breweries introduced and so many new beers and everybody moving around jobs and just and a bunch of new beer bars opening up, copycats, great ones, you know, there's just been an immense influx of craft beer in general, uh, be it on the retail side, distributor side, uh, supplier side, and I think the fact that this beer has stood the test of time, uh, as you just uh, mentioned, is super incredible. Mike went to Chuck and said, Chuck, I want you to brew West Coast IPA. I think I actually had it first off of Chuck's kegerator in his house. And he was like, you gotta try this beer. And then to pre preface this, Chuck was always really a student of hops. And Chuck was a big fan of Simcoe. You know, Simcoe back then was kind of a new hop. You didn't really, um, you didn't yeah. really see that used very often. And it's just really, really, you know, super pungent, really grapefruity, pine, but not excessively bitter and that's where it started to go you know it was like I mean, we were inspired as brewers by people like um, Vinny Slurzo at Blind Pig and we were we were actually really inspired by um, by Stone IPA so these are lighter bodied beers that are just intensely hoppy but Chuck of course being Chuck had to take it a step further I go over to his house and we pull off the kegerator and he's like you got to try this beer and I take a little sip and I'm like you know, holy crap, what the hell are you doing here, buddy? So I'm like, how do you make this beer? And he's like, well, I start off with Simcoe, has bittering hops, you know, and it's like low cohumulone, so it doesn't give excessive bitterness, but it just has all that flavor. And then I'm like, well, what about all this aroma? He's like, well, you know, pound per barrel of hops. And I'm just like, you're crazy, dude, what are you doing? You know, and I'm thinking to myself as a brewer, like, oh yeah, I brew 15 barrel batches. I put a pound of barrel of hops in. I'm gonna yield 10 barrels out of this thing. And that was pretty much what he said. He's like, I don't really care. He's like, I'm just going for the beer. I want it to be, I want it to taste great and I don't really care what it costs. What, what I always liked about the beer was it was a different take on Cascade. So it added this tropical fruit, grapefruit, but you know, you can get some grapefruit in, in Cascade, but I mean, yeah. it's like, but it, it just added this kind of fruitiness. Green Flash was the first ones to name a beer West Coast IPA. Do you, you know, I mean, and I obviously think that that helped put that style out on the map. To me, it seemed like it was a blend of that high bitterness level with those big dry hopping characters that really made it so unique. Um, do you think that's what put, you know, the I, style West Coast IPA on the map? I think, I, I think so, Flash? and a lot of people call their beers West Coast style IPAs now. And I think that this beer was not only an inspiration to me, but like I think really hundreds of people, a lot, many, many brewers throughout the country. But I think this has made everybody, you know, the founding fathers of craft, step up their game. Beers yeah. like this have made people like, holy cow, we got to get a little bit more advanced and a little bit more technical in what we're doing because these new brewers that are coming out like Chuck brewing this really took the whole game to a new level. And guys like Blair, you know, he's like, <laughs> Look at this, this is amazing. And then to, to the point that it's been on tap in this bar for so yeah. long is, is kind of to I that. I, I call it the lupulin shift. Yeah. yeah. Because, it's uh, you know, hey, it's that's like beautiful. Back when I was first brewing professionally, I would go to Anchor. I was living up in the Bay Area. I'd go to, over to Anchor and I would drink Anchor Liberty Ale yeah. that had been kegged that day. 
And I'm like, heck yeah, so it's, it's super then. hoppy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was you're crazy. Like, you're like, what this is, is this? Is this? Crazy. Yeah, I've had. What's and going on? <laughs> <laughs> so what's the next thing though, you know? Well, it's already right. happening, but, <laughs> I, but, I, but, I, yeah. but I do think, I, I, I never heard the term, I don't know, if that, if, has that ever been used before? Is that your- The Lubulin shift? No, yeah. I mean, yeah. we talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Many used that. It used to be on the Pliny the Younger shirt back in the day, Lubulin threshold shift, and it had a definition on the back. I absolutely- I think I still have that. I absolutely love that term. I've never heard it, so I mean, for me, it's like, I think that it's it's brilliant. I feel like that that a lot of people try to strive to make this beer. It's oh. about balance. It's balance because this Absolutely. beer has okay. How do you get? How do you handle the, this amount of hop at right. the time? You think nowadays? There's I've I've heard it's, of like two pound per barrel dry hopping, hop standing, hop bursting. Oh my God! There's so much going on right now, <laughs> that, and it's great. All of this is, is great. You know, I, we, we've experimented at our little brewery. Uh, but there's tons of great information. Right. When, when I had this beer, I'm like, I'm getting, I'm absolutely getting like this toasty, dark, caramely flavor, but it leaves my palate really quick. Right. And the bitterness, it, it's almost like there's this, uh, it's almost like a sine wave. Sine wave goes, you don't want peak and valley in beer. You don't want peaking and valleying. You want a sine wave, nice smooth flow between transitions. Think of surfing. You want white water dumping or do you want nice peeling waves? This beer to me was like, it has the malt backbone that I want in the beer, but then it leaves me without being sweet or cloying. And then there's these layers of, I'm smelling fruit, passion fruit, I don't know. At times I get passion fruit out of it, I get grapefruit out of it, I get pine, but then I taste it and I get that, that kind of earthy, woodsy notes that I get out of Northern California beers. I love that and I go, oh, then, but then it leaves me so quickly with that nice lingering bitterness. Still, I had a sip a minute ago and it's still like in the back, reminding me that I'm drinking a hoppy beer. If I was to take a West Coast IPA recipe and just give them the ingredients and say, hey, I dry hop with this and my bittering hops with this and this is the malt I use, I could give it to another brewer and it wouldn't be the same. Yep. And that's the great thing about Green Flash is that we have really, I think, excellent brewers that uh, you know, follow the recipe pretty much, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and the technique. And, but the technique is is great. You know, we we basically have a technique and we follow it, and that's what really makes the beer. And you could you know you see this all the time. You know, hey, let's do a collaboration brew. We'll brew the one this recipe and I'll brew the recipe and we'll we'll serve them side by side. And it's always different. And the great thing about West Coast IPA is it is a drinker. You can actually drink it. You know, like a bunch of them. Yep. So this is a big beer that doesn't drink. It's very deceptive. It doesn't drink malty, but it's malty. It doesn't drink uh, astringently bitter, but it's super hoppy. Like 95 BUs? Yeah. I mean, that's like mammoth. All right, cool. Looks like we got some food on the way, huh? All right. Yeah, Matt's bringing some stuff, stuff he just fired up. Oh, yeah. What, uh, what burger are we rocking today, Scott? Uh, Matt's, Matt cooked up Blue Boy. I think it's great. It's uh, blue cheese, cheddar. Uh, burger, it's delicious. Works perfectly with this beer, I think. Cool. Yeah, let's talk about the beer a little bit. So, um, you know, obviously we've been talking about the history of West Coast and whatnot. And you know, Eric, you were touching on the ingredients that made it so special. You know, I think the ingredients, just the really the way they play out in the beer here, uh, we can see that it's got a nice, very beautiful caramel hue to it. You know, that really lends itself to those crystal malts that we were talking about earlier. But you know, really when we talk about those hop aromas that we were discussing, that really sets this beer apart and you know using all those hops and the dry hop uh, you know you get all those pine citrus grapefruit zest you know just taking a big giant grapefruit and just zest you know micro plant in that thing just smells so gorgeous and you know that's what i get out of the aroma of this beer um, and then, you know, like we were talking about earlier, the, the way that the beer balances so well is always so surprising to me. You know, you have a sip of it and you go, that's supposed to be way more perceptibly bitter than it is. How come I'm not feeling assaulted on my palate? What's the deal? Why am I, you know, why am I being able to drink this so well? I know, why do I want another one? And it is just so gorgeous, so clean and velvety and uh, finishes so dry, you know, with those pungent hop characters. I think it's really beautiful. Yeah, agreed. But 
because of that aftertaste finishing so dry, you know, and really pairing it up with the, that awesome Blue Boy Burger, you got that cheddar cheese in there, which has that nice bitterness to it, little nutty character, great pairing. And then you throw in the blue cheese dressing, uh, and then you have the caramelization of the burger and the bacon. That's something that not a lot of people talk about. You know, you have that mired reaction, very similar to how we're caramelizing the malts, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And you put together those malts and the way that they're making the burger, the way that they're making the bacon, and then you have all those caramelization, the sugars that are coming out onto the surface, and you're tasting that as you take a bite of the burger, you're tasting that as you take a sip of the beer. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. Um, anyway, well, it was really awesome hanging out with you guys and catching up. Uh, Scott, thanks for having Dude, us, I man. Dude, I love you, man. I haven't seen you in a while, no so doubt. it's good to see you, brother. Hell yeah. Jim. Thank you, sir. One of my best friends. Absolutely. Right. I hate you so much. <laughs> exactly why don't we get, a, do. why yeah. don't we get a cheers in here? Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. cheers. I want that life. Oh, beer, beer. Cheers, boys. <laughs>